Pleasure to meet you today. Nice to meet you. So I've got to say that, first of all, as a child growing up, I had a recurring nightmare of people, whether it be my parents or teachers, smiling at me with malicious intent. So thanks for bringing this nightmare to absolute life. <laughs> You're welcome, I made it just for you. Yeah, thank you so much. When I first saw the trailer for Smile One, I could not believe it. I'm like, no way. <laughs> That's exactly my nightmare. I'm gonna have to track this guy down. <laughs> Here I am. So talking about the sequel, how did the concept for the pop star element come up, the, the core concept? Was there an inspiration? Were you watching a music video and thinking, what if they were possessed or something? <laughs> well, when conversations about a sequel began, um, like that first month, any early ideas that came to me, I just threw out because I was like, oh, it's like too obvious, too easy of a continuation. I wanted to really challenge myself to do something really unexpected. And um, I love pop music and, and sort of this like bolt of lightning kind of hit me about this idea of this character that became Sky Riley, played by Naomi Scott. Um, her world, this world of a mega pop star, felt like such an exciting, unexpected world for Smile to invade. Yeah, absolutely. And now casting Naomi Scott, I mean, not only does she deliver in spades on the heavy side of things, she's also got to dance and sing, and it's a crazy showcase of her skills. Do you think like that you won the lottery getting her? <laughs> well, I think it was a perfect storm, absolutely. I mean, Naomi is so incredibly talented. She is a ferocious, force of nature uh, and I'm, I'm in awe of her but yeah she has that gravitas to to put on the skin of this mega pop star but also to go to some really heavy human raw places um, and the singing yes yeah, she sings all the original songs uh, she performs that choreography um, she was such a, a fantastic partner in crime and I also really love the idea of um, of taking a Disney princess and uh, putting her through the thrasher of smile. Yeah, Jasmine goes through some things. <laughs> it's such an exhausting performance from her, so just being in that mind space for so long. But I was also wondering how it is on set for you guys. I, I know that sometimes the vibes can be a little bit more with levity and lights to, to make sure everyone's doing okay, but that some filmmakers like to keep things as tense as possible to match the vibe or the tone of the film. How are things on set during some of these really stressful times? You know, I think on set, um, it, it's, you know, some of the really insanely stressful moments, like, yeah, we're all very dialed in and everybody's like holding their breath watching the monitor, of course. But working with Naomi, it was really important that, that again, that we really felt like partners in it. So we're in constant dialogue, constant communication, and it felt like, you know, we were really in it together. I mean, she's on the other side of the camera, of course, having to put herself through it, but it was, you know, making sure that I could create that space for her. And uh, what's so amazing about Naomi is like, She'd be in the middle of something incredibly intense and stressful and everybody's sort of, you know, really tense and holding their breath. And then I'd call cut and then she'd immediately like make a face in the camera or crack a joke and sort of like let everybody off the hook. And she's just, she's just really wonderful in that way. And a lot of it was to, to camera, right? I mean, there's so much of it to camera. Was there any kind of process or it's just, it's the skill just on display? Was there some kind of process where you were like, okay, it's okay, we're gonna have someone behind it or to the side to help you bounce off, or is it all just up here? You know, I'm, I'm very much somebody um, who is incredibly um, um, intentional with, with what I do with the camera, um, and how I sort of, especially with, with uh, my lead character, um, how the camera is observing her and how it's sort of interacting with her, I want the camera to almost feel like its own character in the film. And it takes some getting used to, I think, for the actors with, with some of what I do, because it's quite uh, technically intense um, to be, you know, uh, sort of have your space violated by the camera like that. But again, it's about creating that space so that, that Naomi can, um, or any of my actors, um, do their best performance um, and really, you know, at a certain point sort of forget the camera is there. There's a lot of kind of more ambitious, elaborate set pieces in this. The opening is so cool. I want to see that over and over. That's a short Thank film you. on its own. <laughs> was there any particular sequence that you thought going in, this is going to be a nightmare to make, and it ended up being quite smooth, and vice versa? Was there a <laughs> film, was there a sequence that you thought, easy as hell, and then what is going on? Well, I am not so naive to think that anything will be easy right. in the filmmaking process. I mean, filmmaking is, every day is a thousand challenges and, you know, everything sort of on fire and going wrong constantly and trying to adapt constantly. Um, but I go in with such a strong plan uh, that it sort of gives us uh, the, the breathing room to adapt if we have to. But, you know, certainly um, some of the big performance stuff was incredibly uh, logistically complicated and challenging to pull off, especially in the middle of making a totally like separate 
very intense horror film. We had to do both at the same time. It often felt like we were making two movies at once. Now, uh, I'm sure you're being asked, but the, the ending of this film, I will not say much about it, but I can only imagine where we go from here. Uh, are there any thoughts that you're having? Is there any talks, etc.? Well, listen, I think there's a lot of very intriguing roads that Smile could go down. I'd want to make sure that it stays really exciting and, and unexpected if there were more stories to tell in the sort of Smile universe, um, if you want to call it that. Um, but you know, for right now, I'm just really excited to see how audiences respond to Smile 2, and we'll have to see what the future holds. Absolutely. And as a filmmaker, are you interested in tackling other genres as well, or is horror more your forte for the moment? I mean, absolutely, I'm interested in other genres. I mean, for me, I, I love all different kinds of genres. I, I especially love things that have, like, stressful, like, anxiety fuel uh, to them, uh, which is why I often lean into horror. But um, I would like to do things that are that are bigger and, and in scope and, in um, you know, try to just create really, hopefully, unique experiences in, in the theater. Congrats again on Smile 2, and I hope it's a hit. Thank you so much. Really lovely talking to you. Thank you. Appreciate it.